Greetings and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Clearly Disabled, here to read you the latest patch notes for Star Citizen's live servers so you don't have to. We're going to discuss new updates, another holiday event, bugs, glitches, returning game modes, what's plaguing pilots, and what perils players will face when they're just trying to get onto an elevator with patch 3.17.5. This patch is now available for testing in the live Persistent Universe, so open up a beer, light them if you got them, and let's get to the patch notes. Now, first things first, Cloud Imperium Games always cautions players against entering the verse without first deleting their user and shader folders after each major update. Don't worry, it's actually quite easy to find these folders. First, if you've installed your game onto your C drive, which I have not, I've installed mine on my D drive, so for me, it's going to be D drive, Program files here, but I have mine under Star Citizen, Robert Space Industries, and Star Citizen Live User Folder right there. You just give that a delete. Now keep in mind, we're gonna, don't delete it just yet. If you're listening to this in real time, we're going to get to that in just a moment. What you also need to do is head on over to your C drive to find your shaders folder. And the way you do that is C drive users folder go to whatever your username is now this is very important because under view we've got to make sure hidden items are revealed and so we've got app data go into local scroll on down to star citizen doesn't really say it on the cig website but if you go into the star citizen alpha 317 or you know whatever the patch currently is folder shaders give that a delete as well now what i said before about not deleting your user folder just yet let's get back to that for just a moment we're going to go back into star citizen live into our user folder into the client folder click on zero controls mappings right here dear citizens please remember these are your button mappings so take care to Back up your bindings files before deleting the user folder. Trust me, it saves you a lot of headache. They do recommend starting from scratch, but that can be rather difficult. Now, let's talk about some of the changes in this patch, Pilots. We're going to begin this round of patch notes with some known issues, and boy, are some of them a doozy. But before we dive in, let me remind you that these are known issues, so Cloud Imperium are already working on fixes for them. In the meantime, strap in, and let's get through the list. First up, we've had an issue with the Anvil Pisces and some of its variants. It seems some players may lose the ability to interact with the door panel button, preventing access to the ship entirely. But don't worry, dear Pisces pilots, CIG are working on getting that door open for you. And speaking of ships, those of you piloting the Sabre Raven may notice a slight green flickering light filling the entire screen from the cockpit. CIG has thankfully determined that this happens due to various weather VFX and are working on a fix. But until it is rectified, those of us with Sabre Ravens will get a loner Sabre in the interim. But that's not all, because CIG is also encouraging players to always relaunch the game after getting kicked to the main menu from a 30k server crash. In fact, it may not be possible to enter the game at all following a 30k as I've noticed myself without fully relaunching. I've only run into this problem once so far, but I know some players in the org I run with have experienced it several times over the last several days. Now, targeting. Targeting is also a bit wonky at the moment, with a ship's targeting pip potentially disappearing or being missing entirely for some players. This means that they cannot be targeted at all when this happens, so fly safe out there and pick your fights accordingly. And an oldie but a goldie. Some ships may still be found loading in their hangars with the landing gear retracted if the player in question happened to leave the engines on upon departing their ship this has been an issue for some time now and it is still advised to get into the habit of always powering down your engines when leaving your ship on top of that one of my favorite long time bugs is making a return that's right player character arms can still misalign when seated in ships obstructing a ship's hud and even in a player's entire view next up Car to all owners may notice a small issue with their ships, nothing major really, just that they may be spawning on the hangar floor sideways. No big deal, right? 
Also, weapon fire has been found to sometimes penetrate a ship's shields when it, it is in motion in some cases. Another issue to bear in mind to all those players who rely on starfares for refueling, be aware that any attempt to move your ship while refueling is taking place may cause your ship to tilt uncontrollably before popping away from the starfare. So, always remember to please keep your ship stationary until refueling has completed. And unfortunately for raft owners, players may notice that some elevator controls are also having issues as players may find they cannot interact with them from either deck on board the ship. Also, CIG are aware that the headlights on the Crusader Ares are apparently so dim that they cannot be spotted by other players at what they would refer to as a reasonable range. But that's not all, dear citizens. We've also got some issues with weapons while going EVA or an extravehicular activity in Star Citizen. Yes, apparently some players may notice that when going for a leisurely spacewalk, a leisurely jaunt through space, all weapons are held like a pistol. Additionally, a combat AI bug in UGF, or underground facility missions, may pose a bit of a problem as players may notice a, a, a tiny issue with some NPCs that are entirely necessary for completing a mission may not be spawning. Some UGF and even Bounty Hunter missions are also having a minor complication as well with turret respawn timers. It seems that some turrets are respawning rather quickly around bunkers and after being destroyed. How quickly? Well, CIG is warning players that near instantaneous respawns of some bunker turrets is possible. Cloud Imperium has also found that multiple locations across the verse are a bit offset from their Lagrange points that they are supposed to be housed within, so bear that in mind when quantum jumping to and fro in your adventures. And for those of you wondering why your character keeps holstering and unholstering your weapon uncontrollably, don't worry, CIG are aware, and yes, they are working on a fix. Another problem players may face is weapons disappearing from your character between sessions. This problem is actually not just limited to weapons, however, as armor and utility items are also affected. I finished up one of my previous videos recently, uh, logged out, Realized I hadn't actually taken a screenshot for my thumbnail, logged back in, and my helmet was gone. And this was prior to 317.5 dropping, so this is actually an ongoing issue. But wait, we're not done with weapons and inventory problems just yet, because there's a chance that when you see a weapon in a box, and it has an attachment on it, when you loot it, it may come missing that attachment. And finally, going back to the ships for a moment, players may want to tread carefully at landing pads as their ships may end up in an unknown state and then have to be reclaimed when the ship is stored or streamed out of the location. So, that's it for the known issues. Cloud Imperium are working hard to fix them soon. TM, but we also have Lunar New Year for the year of the rooster 2953 on the docket. The Lunar New Year, starting on January 20th, I know I'm a little late, and ending on February 6th, 2023, will be a celebration of the in-game Year of the Roosters Lunar New Year 2953. The holiday, quote, binds its roots in old Earth customs that mark the end of a lunar solar year, and is an amalgam of actual earthly traditions and, of course, newly found analogous alien traditions. A trailer on the RSI website highlights a multicultural event as the 2953 Red Festival begins. A combination of Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese, as well as alien Banu traditions, celebrants are often found wearing red and gold, eating long foods, and exchanging red envelopes with one another. Red and gold being chosen as the colors of good fortune, and likewise with the hiding of the red envelopes in honor of the Banu patron of luck. More recently, Practitioners have instead taken to hiding the red envelopes all across the stars, leaving them for strangers to find. Quote, for those deemed in need by fate to discover. So, be on the lookout for envelopes across the verse. Not much in them, really. Just some money in the form of UAEC. So, like a reverse tooth fairy, strangers leave one another presents of cash all over the system in a gesture of creating good fortune for someone else. And on to my favorite part of this patch, the return of the Siege of Orison. I actually did not get to try it the first time around, because between starting a new retail job during the holidays, being a dad, and actually trying to see my wife and children from time to time, and even play little Dungeons and Dragons on occasion, I was a bit strapped for time. 
but I got to try it finally, and I'm so glad that I did, because I was blown away. Honestly, blown away at the scope of this mission. It felt like the first truly fleshed out PvE driven mission on the scale of uh, Destiny 2 Raid or Group Quest with the player count of a World of Warcraft world boss. It was spectacular, partly because I also joined my very first organization or org, which is akin to flight crews or guilds for Star Citizen players. Yes, I am still a bit of a noob. I loved it, mostly because you can get into massive groups and all of you storm these towers, you know, desyncing, lagging, barely running at 30 FPS on a not so insignificant computer, and I was having a blast anyway. Now, I want to preface all this by saying, yes, the AI was a bit goofy. The ground AI is very slow and not a huge challenge altogether, honestly. And yes, I have heard, no, I have not played it yet, but I have heard that the AI is actually quite different in 3.18. Much more active, more inquisitive of players and their ships from videos I have seen. So, if that's true, I honestly cannot wait for it because Siege of Orison will get significantly more interesting on the ground in 3.18. The only truly difficult part of Siege for me was the anti-aircraft guns and, well, PvP of any kind. The AA guns are lethal in swarms even against a massive C2 eventually, and combined with the presence of NPCs armed with rocket launchers, it's easy to have a bad day in the later parts of Siege. Let me give you an example. See, when you get to Crusader and you land and park, you get out, take elevators and shuttles all over the place, easily spending a few minutes just navigating at times. Then fighting your way through entire sections of the city, into buildings, into more elevators, all perfectly captured in real time, or, you know, just enough time to play the girl from Ipanema. But the dozen or more players present have to put their faith in the hands of one brave pilot after taking down the local AA guns. That is, unless one of you accidentally shot someone while desyncing around dozens of other players, earning yourself a crime stat, and now the AA guns want to simply take out the criminal. The criminal on your ship. The ship that you and probably a dozen or more players are on. For World of Warcraft players, imagine gunship from Wrath of the Lich King with a bunch of PvP thrown in and mostly one of two things happening. One is working directly with or against anyone else and loving it. Or there are two or three large groups all working directly alongside and in direct opposition to one another. With PvP, a trio of things tends to happen as well. Lots of accidental PvP damage from desyncing or shooting someone in the face because they spooked you or someone has taken it upon themselves to start killing people on purpose. Usually because they're just sad, lonely little goblins or you're party of a large, probably elite group of players in one of the various orgs of Star Citizen and you are literally sacrificing your crime stat, endangering yourself with the local law enforcement and inviting the attacks of bounty hunters from all over the server by killing members of other orgs just so their group doesn't finish the event first. And yours does, creating a sort of designated bad guy role that people will then proceed to complain about amazingly in the global chat. I think some major changes are needed for Siege of Orison, however, as most of these issues could be resolved with a queuing system. See, I, I like the PvP aspect, don't get me wrong, but seriously, either there needs to be a severe consequence for PvP attacks and deaths once it's all worked out, which I don't see happening at all, or allowing a much larger focus on the huge group dynamic where maybe the event can unfold so that no shots fired at other players are harmful or are at least non-lethal in a huge care bear hug of competition rewarding those who killed the most lieutenants, the final boss, how many bad guys you killed or something. Or there needs to be, entirely separately, a queuing system to put two to three groups pre-made or not, but with PvP turned on, or maybe off in another variation, but PvP turned on as the groups are encouraged to hold one another back as well as pushing forward, creating the bad guy roles. I don't know exactly what the best idea is, I truly don't, but I really hope a queue system of some kind, a group finder for larger missions like World of Warcraft has, maybe. And yes, I've played a lot of WoW in my time, and a lot of Diablo... And not as much Destiny, but I reference those games only really in comparison to the systems that exist in the games in all seriousness. Because if other MMOs exist, CIG should definitely take a hint or two and just simply implement some strategies that players have unanimously concurred work quite well. Hence a mechanic like group queuing. And I completely understand Cloud Imperium are trying to make a super realistic space game. 
the most realistic space game ever made and go ahead continue doing that but there's no reason we wouldn't have sophisticated ways of forming groups for merc missions bounty missions and so on besides just asking for groups in general chat yes orgs are a thing but many people do not play in an org or at least don't always play in one and it's a bit more difficult for some of us to be that social that quickly with so many people my goodness i'm in a massive extrovert and even i have a hard time rolling into someone's discord server and saying hi i'm clearly disabled can i join your group or would anyone like to man my turret today I honestly dread the forced interactions for the introverts out there. Another issue facing the Siege of Orison. You've made your group, you've stormed the buildings together, you've killed the Lieutenant mini-bosses, and you're making your way to the final platforms. And what's that? Oh yeah, this is an everything simulator, so why yes, I'd love to load up onto a massive transport ship with either all of my buds from my org, or all of these components. Complete strangers, all of which are armed to the teeth and looking to get paid, and storm another platform full of baddies in a building with another mini-boss or the final boss inside. And what's that? Yes, I'd love to do that under fire from anti-aircraft guns that we just worked so hard to disable because Megatron Deathgasm or Timmy Frank 2937 accidentally shot someone while lagging and now all of the base guns are trying to kill the criminal. Making it kind of unfortunately prudent to sort of prune your groups by paying attention to the local bounty wanted board just to keep yourself and others alive. After all, you've got enough problems with the ship taking damage from rocket launchers on the last couple of platforms and all of this all of it is to say nothing about the absolute madman that is the pilot that has to fly you there. Because I firmly believe only the most deranged of Star Citizen pilots have the gall, the gumption, the gusto, and the swagger to look 10 plus strangers in the eye and say, I can probably fly better than all of you, so for the sake of all of our lives, let me fly. Only to then usually get shot down in a blaze of glory, and now his name is spoken about as often as Robert Paulson, but in hushed, malignant tones like the apostles might have spoken about Judas. Your reputation will go up in flames faster than your ship, and nary again will those brave soldiers trust you to fly everyone to safety again. But hey, you're unlikely to run into these same people anyway until server messing is finished, right? So why not, Flyboy? Take the wheel and fly. Although your org might just do the same thing, only they'll just keep letting you try and try again. They just reserve the right to judge you for it, harshly and verbally, until someone else does it, and then... And then the table of blame just keeps on a-spinning. And of course, finish it all in your group. You and your org will split the profits of a most lucrative mission. Players will also be greeted with a commemorative red envelope this week and wooden roosters, which can be placed around for decoration to remember the events by. Longtime players can receive their previous year's rewards in the same envelope, and we assume these will be restored every major alpha patch as well as starting items. What's more, the Carrick and Pisces, yes, the same Pisces whose entry buttons may not work, will be getting special red paints to liven up the season from the pledge store. So if you're tired of spending hundreds of dollars on ships, or you're having trouble justifying $950 for an 890 jump, or if you don't use store credit and buy it with a debit or credit card at discount as a war bond for the much more attractive price of $890, get it, $890 for the 890 jump, then look no further than this special discounted paint sale? I mean, hell, if I had a Pisces, I'd probably just buy the paint bundle they've got, too. At least that's 20 bucks. I can imagine spending a little money on paint, I guess, if I need to. And if that's honestly how we're going to keep funding this game, okay. Sure, I'll buy paints every year for a few bucks. But wait, what's that? There's been an update on the Misk Hull Sea, and Cloud Imperium is saying that it has an impending arrival in 2023? We have the opportunity to buy it as a concept first, and I have always had a real problem with concept buys. I really have. If you don't, great. Cool. That's awesome. I do not judge you at all. Spend your money however you wish. I 
simply love knowing that the money I'm spending today is on a ship that I can fly today. However, I also know this game would not be here without the thousands of people who, over the years, bought nothing but concept buys before I started playing. We would not have this game otherwise, dear viewers. So, for $325 on a war bond, you too can own a cargo runner that can carry almost seven and a half times the cargo of the C2 Hercules, the current largest flyable hauler in the game. And it can be loaded like the hull A with the new persistent cargo mesh system in 3.18. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, I'll get back to you on that one, guys. Now, you will get a loaner vehicle until such a time as the pledge ship becomes available in-game, but it does not say what we will get in lieu of one. My guess is a C2 Hercules, although the Hull A is a great contender for sheer gameplay, but now you're talking about a ship that carries literally 1% of the Hull C's potential cargo. Well, we finally made it to the end. We covered a lot here today. Lots of known bugs and issues. The Lunar New Year Festival has begun. The Siege of Orson is back. Ship sales. Lots of ship sales. Paint sales. The new Hull Sea is coming soon. TM. I did miss the Daymar rally. There's honestly plenty of talk about that awesome event, so go look that up if you're interested in an all-day race across Daymar as people do their best impressions of Mad Max and Star Citizen. Thanks for listening to the entire video. If you have, and always, I'm clearly disabled. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it, and tell me what you're most excited for. Leave a comment, subscribe if you wish, help out the yield algorithm. Stay tuned for more videos and news updates. And of course, enjoy playing Star Citizen, and I hope to see you in the verse.